Imagine the great artists and masters from the past. With a charged brush or perhaps with a hammer and chisel, these masters left behind treasures that are now studied and examined by the people who are tasked with their documentation, conservation, and long-term care. Conservators are stewards who both care for these treasures today and prepare for the care in the future. Imagine deciphering the path and pressure of each bristle of the painter's brush or the tool mark traces of the sculptor's chisel, following the gestures of the artist during the act of creation and gaining a better understanding of the artist's original intent. Imagine tracking a yellow brush stroke that has remained vibrant while a blue detail has faded and learning more about the artist's materials and artistic choices. We can know more about our artwork now than we have ever known before. 21st century documentation tools empower us to act as stewards and craftsmen seeking insight and discovery. Today, conservators use digital images to care for humanity's treasures as part of their normal documentation practice. In this documentary, we will see and hear conservators evaluate the imaging tool Reflectance Transformation Imaging, or RTI, in their own words. RTI uses a series of digital photos with the subject illuminated from different directions to capture the subject's true surface shape and color. These interactive images reveal new information not discerned through other imaging methods such as raking light photography and microscopy. RTI tools keep a digital lab notebook that describes the means and circumstances of the RTI image's creation allowing others to evaluate the image's quality and potential for reuse. Most importantly, RTIs can be produced and explored by conservators and curators using freely available software, empowering self-exploration and discovery of the objects under their care, without the need of imaging specialists or high-tech equipment. For this study, Culture Heritage Imaging worked with the Fine Arts Museums of San Francisco to image objects in their collection, handpicked by FAMSF conservators, in order to determine the usefulness of reflectance transformation imaging for museum conservation. We had the opportunity to sit down and hear directly from the conservators as they described their objects and their candid impressions of the RTI imaging results. Let's hear from them now. For this project, we picked an object that has some serious conservation problems that we want to know more about. So we picked a um, 15th, early 16th century enamel plaque from Limoges, France. And the reason we picked that is that this plaque is made with painted glass on copper. And uh, because of the way it was made and because of what it's gone through over time, it has actually suffered a lot. And we can't quite figure out the problem. We needed your help or the help of this specific digital technique to really look at it better uh, and understand the problem. Basically, the enamel is not as sturdy and as healthy as it looks to the eye. Mm -hmm. It's got a lot of lot of li uh, little problems that are eating away mm -hmm. at especially the blues and the greens and the purples mm -hmm. in, the, um, in the color. We're going to be able to use the photographs to tell us where the different kinds of problems are. We're going to be able to say, ah, over there it's just cracking. There we can put a consolidant in. In other areas, we're going to be able to see, oh, that flake has pick gotten picked up and moved over there. So we can either try to push it back where it belongs and then consolidate it. Mm 
uh, hopefully. And then there's other areas where there's little salts and little crystals on the surface. And the best we can do with those is remove them mm -hmm. and hopefully stabilize the piece. Mm -hmm. But the photography is going to help us come up with a solution and figure out what to do where. What we're going to do is take all of the color away and try to treat the surface as a perfect mirror. So right. anything that isn't on the surface, of course, will, will reflect. Right. And we, and we get this effect. Oh, cool. Wow. Ah, oh, see, now that's so much better than anything we could do under the microscope. It is absolutely staggering. It shows the extent of the glass disease. It's just a really fractured, sad surface. It almost makes me cry. <laughs> it's so, it's so uh, horrific. But it also illustrates not only the breakouts of the, of the salts, but it also shows you how severe the crizzling has advanced. Crizzling, um, can you tell us a bit more? Crizzling about is that phenomenon in glass where the glass, uh, first it starts with little itty bitty secretions of a little salt, you know, that might have come up, and then it combines with moisture, and then when it grows, it puts pressure on the glass surface, and it starts uh, cracking. And then it'll soon develop other cracks in other areas, and before too long, you have a network of crack allure. And what, what I'm looking at is actually that network of crack allure with some pretty serious uh, outbreaks of salts on the surface. Uh, That's so unbelievable. As you said, the horrific problem. <laughs> Now, if we go to, this is again just a detail of the full panel, but let's take a look at that. Mm -hmm. Now we're seeing it all over the place. And you know, Elizabeth, you pointed out that you thought it was principally in the blue area, and we can see, I think, clearly. Uh, I can see that the worst problem is in the blue areas. Uh, I can actually see a couple of other things, mm -hmm. uh, which, are, which would excite not only a conservator, but a curator. I can see some of the original technique mm -hmm. that we have heard described, but now I can see it visually much, much better, such as the outlines of the arm and the robe. Well, uh, you can see how they painted those. those. Um, it, is, it is beautiful because you can see these dark lines, how they applied them. It was very hard for them to do the drawing and then to fill in the color and to do it so that they wouldn't fuse together because they had to heat the panel each time and melt the glass. So they had to do it in such a way that one didn't totally disappear. Mm -hmm. So I can see how the lines are beautifully preserved. We knew that the blues and the purples had the worst problem because we know that those are the least stable pigments in glass. Uh, blue, purples, greens, sometimes red. Uh, we know that the yellows and the whites tend to be a lot more stable. And this actually confirmed it. That's uh, very impressive. 